Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and the Walking Dead series has said goodbye to Rick Grimes, but not in the way we expected. Here we were expecting Mark to get killed off like everyone else does, but instead we got something closer to the way Itchy and Scratchy said goodbye to Poochie. I have to go now. My planet needs me. <laughs> That wasn't supposed to happen. Those Sphinx double-crossed me. And now we're learning about Andrew Lincoln continuing to play Rick in three Walking Dead movies on AMC? What the hell's going on? Now, we haven't been able to dedicate enough resources to cover this show weekly anymore, but this is such a huge turn of events and such an interesting episode of television that I have to break it down. And spoiler warning if you haven't seen the episode yet. Okay, let's start with the big question that I'm sure is on your mind. What the f just happened? Well, at the end of the last episode, Rick was left for dead, impaled on rebarb as walkers were closing in. Now, we've known Andrew Lincoln's days on the show were numbered, and there was some interesting symbolism with Rick on the white horse. Like in the book of Revelation in the Bible, there are the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and the fourth rider rides a pale horse, bringing with him death. But Rick escapes the walkers in this episode. He stays just out of reach, but still bleeds out and slips in and out of consciousness. Ultimately, he clears away the walkers by blowing them up on a bridge, and he makes his friends think he died. But he washes up ashore in front of Anne, formerly Jadis, who radios her contact in the helicopter and airlifts Rick out of there. I have to go now. My planet needs me. So where is Rick going? This is where things get a bit harder to explain. This helicopter mystery has been teased by the show since the very first episode when Rick heard a helicopter echoing through downtown Atlanta. This final episode brought things full circle. Here Rick is again, alone on horseback, chasing helicopters. And if you listen closely, this episode ended with the same music as the music that ended the first episode. It's called Space Junk by Wang Chung. The same way that episode signaled Rick transitioning from solitude to a broader world of mysterious survivors, this episode is meant as a turning point as well. But a turning point to what? Well, the helicopter resurfaced a few times last season. Rick spotted it gliding overhead, and Jada slash Anne summoned it when she briefly had Negan tied down in the junkyard. This season, Anne has been seen talking to this helicopter guy on the radio, cryptically referring to people as A's and B's. We do know that Anne previously kept Rick in a shipping container marked A, and now she told the helicopter guy that Rick is a B. The helicopter guy prefers A's. He tells Jadis that she needs to bring him an A if she wants to be airlifted out of there. And a few episodes back, she told Gabriel that she has been trading people for supplies. A's seem to be more valuable. She told Gabriel all this time, I thought you were a B, and then she bops him on the head, and then later ties him down and tries to attack him with a walker the same way she almost did with Negan. Now, there are a few possibilities for what this means. The showrunner, Angela Kang, was asked if A indicates a leader and B a follower, and she said it was a very strong maybe, but I don't see how Gabriel is more of a leader than Rick. The best explanation I've found is that A could refer to an infected human who hasn't turned yet, like a strong, willful survivor type, which this new community would use for experimentation. Meanwhile, B could be someone they consider to be an otherwise valuable member of their new society. Like maybe Anne previously liked Gabriel and she wanted to keep him as a B, but instead she ended up shoving a walker at him, perhaps to bite him and to infect him, as she tried to do with A type Negan. And at some point she planned to infect Rick for testing, but maybe now she only wants to recruit Rick to be a living, breathing, clean human to help their community. This is really the only rationalization that makes sense to me at this point. Like think about it, infected humans that haven't turned yet are really the most rare type of people. Like they exist in this unique in-between state for a brief period of time that would necessitate a helicopter airlift. Now some are saying this could be inspired by the Commonwealth in the Walking Dead comics. The Commonwealth is another outside society that the survivors come across. They have a similar class categorization. In that case, it was more of a white collar versus blue collar distinction. But all this is what I assume the three Rick movies will explore. In a very guarded interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Scott Gimple implied this new society could pose a threat, suggesting this new arc would pose a challenge to Rick in these movies. All while the remaining survivors on the TV show will deal with the Whispers, who will be introduced after this time jump on the show. So I think these movies would explore Rick and Anne in this new strict society. Perhaps one that's like quarantine somewhere in the outside world that's working on efforts to research a cure. It's kind of like the story that we saw in 28 Days Later in the I Am Legend movie. But it is clear that Rick's storyline on the TV series is 
finished because this episode was filled with Rick experiencing unconscious flashbacks to key past moments. So what did Rick's visions mean? Rick began this episode in his old hospital room from the very first shot of the series, standing over his own body as he lay in a coma. Outside, the birds flock in a swarm. This actually echoes the image from the opening moments of the first episode this season. And when he looks back, they transform into helicopters, foreshadowing his salvation at the end of the episode. Later in the cabin, Rick finds a deer head mounted on the wall. Now, deers have seemed to be stalking Rick throughout the series. There's the one he made Michonne give to the Saviors in season seven, and that goofy CGI deer at the carnival grounds, and of course the deer that Carl saw right before he got shot in season two. And this takes Rick back to his arrival in Atlanta in the first episode. Here he runs into, of all people, Shane! Suddenly Rick's back in the car with his old cop buddy who he killed, and they're looking at this flipped car. This is actually a callback to Rick's final moments before his coma in the very beginning, when that third criminal from the flipped car shot him. Go Shane asks about his daughter, which I interpret as Rick's guilty subconscious manifesting as his old friend, helping Rick accept the idea that Judith isn't more his family than the others he would have to leave behind. All this is to make it easier for himself to let go. Shane also makes callbacks to past Rick moments, referring to the asshole in the church with the red machete, and referring to when Rick bit Joe in the neck in season four. Later, Rick reunites with Herschel on the farm, who counsels him to realize it's not his responsibility to protect everyone forever, and that he's already given so much. Rick later finds himself back in the hospital at the famous don't open dead inside doors, or uh, don't dead open inside doors. This is from the first episode. But here, don't has been crossed out, as if to invite Rick to cross over into the world of the dead. And in this world of the dead, there's a field of bodies that Rick crosses over, and it's filled with people in Rick's life, both alive and dead. And for some reason, Sasha, not his wife and son, is the one to deliver the final message. Cool. At the end, when Rick says, I found them before blowing the bridge, he's talking about his family. He found his family, the people most important to him, the people he can comfortably leave behind to look after his fake daughter, Judith, as he flies back to his home planet to discover what comes after. But my question for you guys is, are you more excited to see the survivors face the Whisperers or Rick face this new community? Comment down below with your thoughts and follow New Rockstars on Twitter and Instagram at New Rockstars. And for my deeper thoughts, you can follow me on Twitter and Insta at EAVOSS. And if you live in the LA area and you want to see me parody all these big nerd properties, come to my live comedy show, Infinity Fan. Our first show sold out and now we're back with a new updated show and you know don't come if you can't take a joke about dumpsters friday november 16th 8 p.m acme comedy theater in north hollywood ticket info in the description below and before i go i know a lot of you want me to go back to weekly breakdowns of the walking dead and i appreciate your support so much but we just cannot afford to make walking dead videos that often anymore there's a lot of reasons why i don't have time to go into all of them but hopefully i'll check back in a few times throughout the season to break down the big important stuff that happens cool subscribe to new rock stars for breakdowns of everything else you love and if you need me I'll be back on my home planet.